Hello and Randy here playing Farming Simulator 22 and welcome back to West Bridge Hills here in Farming Simulator 22, not 2013 here of course. Since last episode finished up the harvest here on Field 17, this is the brand new field we bought. Uh, we got just about, uh, well maybe not quite two, maybe like a trailer and a half full of soybeans or something like that. When I put one load in the silo system over here. And then the other is still sitting in the trailer here yet. I'm still kind of debating what I want to do with those yet. Do I want to take those down to the flour mill and have it milled into flour? Or do we want to just straight up sell it? And, and of course, if we sell it, I'm going to wait till the month of, I'm, I'm going to guess, probably July. I haven't checked here. Time saving stock check says, yep, July. Pretty typical there. 135000 if we do that. Oh, actually, wait a minute. No, that's going to be, uh, that is actually probably going to be double that because I've got another trailer here. Like I said, probably about the same amount that's currently in there. In this trailer, so probably a good uh, two hundred thousand or more uh, we have sitting there at the moment. Not too shabby there, if you ask me. And of course, we don't want to sell at the moment. I want ninety-one thousand if we sold now, one hundred thirty-five if we sold later, right? So yeah, still debating what I want to do with that one because I mean, uh, let's see what's here. Uh, March, so we go April, May, June, July. We got about four months yet. Okay, that's a little more than I thought it was. But anyway, we're not we're not that far from July if we want to sell then, right? I want. So, yeah, I don't know. But then uh, then again, does flour make us more money? I would like to think it does. Might just take longer to make that money, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, on that note, Owen, we need to uh, turn field 17 back around here. Where am I at here? There we go. Uh, replant this field here, double check, and if we need anything else on it here before we uh, do that. We go down line, looks like we are. Um, yeah. Okay, looks all right. Just replant. Let's grab our uh, tractor. Let's maybe uh, run the cultivator across this here, and then we'll go from there. While the cultivator's running, I'm maybe going to take those soybeans. I think we're just going to take them to the flower mill. Or maybe I can, uh, like, do uh, some each way. Let's let's do that. Let's do that. I'll take the uh, what's currently in the trailer. Maybe I'll fill the trailer up. Fill the trailer up. Take that down there. And, uh, yeah, have those converted into flour. And the rest of them just hang on to the cell. We'd like to uh, get into some corn here as well, but and for that matter, once we get into corn, we can do sunflowers as well. I'm trying to think of anything else? Yeah, just be corn and sunflowers once we get a row crop planter, right? Because we can do, I think, everything else up until this point. Well, with the exception of you know grapes, olives, you know, red beets and carrots and parsnips and all that good stuff. That stuff, of course, all comes from the newest uh, was it the premium DLC. I think that was the name of that one, right? The one that just released here a couple of months ago. Okay, at least for now, I'm just going to throw a hired worker on that. Maybe come back to that here later. Oh, speaking of hired workers, by the way. I mean, oh, my goodness, are the hired workers. By the way, I guess I wasn't. That's not something with that. Cultivator, that's that fault. I was going to say, when uh, the cultivate or the hired workers on this map are derp E. Uh, this is not an issue I've actually seen here lately, but if you have trees in the way, this thing will stop and turn around. And I thought uh, this problem had been fixed, Evan, but apparently not. At least, I don't know if it's this map or maybe it's this cultivator here, but especially on field 16 here, I want to see if I can get over there here a minute. Had a lot of issues with that. Uh, the trees on this field are just a little bit closer, right? They're not, like, crazy close, though, but you can see they're right there. Oh, my goodness. I've had an absolute nightmare on this field trying to get a hired worker to work this field here. And actually, you know what? It must be the map, because I, mean, I think the fertilizer spreader did the same thing, too, if I remember correctly. So, I don't think it's just the cultivator at fault. It must be something with the map here. But, yeah, you know, the hired worker... And again, for those of you who played any of the previous versions of the game, you'll remember this issue. The hired worker gets to, like, I don't know, back here somewhere. Stops. Turns around, goes back though. He doesn't like finish the rest. And then if you do get him to go past this tree, well, then he'll just get to the next tree here. He'll get to this tree, stop, turn around, go back. Like, oh my goodness, it's absolutely infuriating. But anyway, good reason to use course play there as opposed to a hired worker. I suppose you don't have to worry about that with course play. Course play will just keep on going. Doesn't care about the trees along the edges of the field. Sometimes it, maybe it should, but anyway. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, we'll fill this up here. Let's take this down to the flour mill. We'll have at least one load ground into flour, and then, like I said, I think the rest will uh, we'll wait and just sell it as as soybeans. I'm curious to see, let's see, like money-wise, 
how this compares. I don't know if I have a good way of comparing this or not. Actually, is this the best way to go? Oh, uh, I probably should have gone. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. This this should work. So the flour mill's right there. Nope, flour mill's there. Okay, no, I should have gone the other way. No, I didn't mean to visit. I wanted to tag it. Okay. <clears throat> guess it doesn't matter much. We'll go this way. I'm gonna go right over there. The tractor actually will keep going here on the hill. I'm a little concerned about that. Also, our soybeans a little bit heavier than was it wheat? I think we had last. Oh, barley. Than barley. I did not notice this tractor struggling that much to pull the trailer here last time. But with these soybeans and a full trailer, this tractor is really struggling. I mean, 200 horsepower tractor. Nine, oh, actually, it's a thousand bushels. Okay, a thousand bushels. Yeah, I suppose. I keep calling it 200 horsepower. Technically, I think it's 175. Call it a 145, but it boosts to 175. Which, again, as I've said before, when you start getting up to that 175 horsepower range, that's, uh, that's going to be a decent sized farm tractor at that point. Oh yeah, tractor lights going downhill, doesn't it? Uh, what a surprise. Who remembers the uh, days back, you know, again, let's go back to Farming Simulator 2013. I'm going to keep uh, talking about that. Don't think that was really a thing back in the day, was it, everyone? You didn't really have to worry about you know, the physics of going up and down hills. Uh, you didn't have to worry about the uh, physics as far as what size implement you were pulling. I mean, who remembers pulling great big, huge planters and cultivators and... Who knows what on, you know, the small little uh, tractors. I forget what that starter tractor was there again, Evan. But, yeah, you, you just get that small little starter tractor. Uh, it was green and yellow. It wasn't a Deutz, though, I don't think. Was it? Something else, I thought. A little green and yellow tractor uh, you started with a lot of times. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So this is where we need to go, right? I need to ah, this one back here. Where's the entrance here again? entrance that does not look like it's going to do well with trucks, by the way. I think I've said that before. Also, while we're here, this reminds me, I'm thinking I'm going to want to change the settings on this. At the moment, we are just uh, storing the flower. I'm not sure where. I thought the flower would have ended up somewhere here, but maybe it is actually still all inside. There are pallets of flour around here somewhere. Hmm. Maybe it's all inside yet. Okay. When it said it was storing it, I guess maybe it actually is, like, storing all of it. I would have thought, again, like I said, that maybe there's some pallets sitting out here somewhere, but why did you not unload? I said to unload it. Did I not? Did you not start to unload it? I have to, No. Okay. Um. Where is our productions here? There we go. And let's set you to sell. And we should start seeing our money going up here. See it switched to spawning there just for a second. Did it, so did it actually spawn some here or were we changing it quick enough? I'm assuming, I'm just assuming that's the spawn spot here, but I could be wrong. I don't see anything there, so I think we're good. And we'll make our way around this uh, convoluted grain mill here. And this would never, never go here in America, that's for sure. I would never have a grain mill like that. Having to drive around, nah, nah. Actually, there's probably is somewhere, but generally speaking, I would, you need enough room to get a large truck around. And I suppose you could there, but wow, talk about no fun. Let's see, is our money going up yet? Set it to sell, right? I don't know how quickly before it starts selling. From the number, it hasn't started selling yet. Oh, and as our soybean flour, it is active and running. Perfect. We're still working on the barley yet as well. I'm curious how long that's going to take to uh, process that, that here, everyone. 
hopefully doesn't uh, take. Hey, must have uh, must have sold a little bit. No, not yet. I guess. But yeah, like I said, curious to see what's how long it's going to take to process that. I know, like some of the other uh, productions, I've had experience with that one. You know, you, like you fill them up, and that's enough to last like two in-game years. Just absolutely ridiculous. It's like what? Well, the production facility is basically worthless at that point. It takes two years to uh, produce anything. I don't know who thought that was okay, but giants and their uh, strange ideas there, if you ask me. Okay, so we still have a load of soybeans in here yet. Like I said, we'll uh, we'll save that for later. We just gotta remember in uh, July we need to sell those, and we got one hundred ten thousand dollars sitting there. So don't uh, don't forget that one, everyone. That'll hopefully maybe be our uh, corn money there. I want to say corn money, like we need a planter, and then we need a header for our combine as well. <clears throat> And then I'm thinking too, maybe we'll have to see once what our next uh, production facility should be. If you folks have any uh, suggestions, let me know. Like, what uh, what production facility should we get into here next? We got the grain mill. Uh, so that means we can start doing stuff that takes flour. Uh, I don't know. Is there any other basic, basic ones we should have first? Farmer's market. Got the restaurant. The restaurant and pizzeria, I'm guessing, probably both take flour. Agricultural fair, bakery, bakery. I'm sure takes flour. No doubt about that one. Yeah, that's for renting the train. We got the dairy. Oh, dairy. Yeah, that one. Um, I wasn't planning on doing any cows, Emma, but we could just like buy milk and produce it that way. That would be an option. The sell everything container. Okay, I'm just yeah, sell. Oh, sugar mill. That would probably another one, good one to get into. Oh, what do we need for sugar though? Probably sugar beets or sugar cane. Oh boy, that means we'd have to get into one of those, which I'm okay with that one. If we do maybe do some sugar beets or something, that might be an option here at some point. Um, you know what? You should be able to pull planter, right? Let's find out. Oh, after we disconnect the trailer. Ah, yeah, someone's still rocking. Oh, you know what? We should probably fill this up first. Still rocking the uh, John Deere 1590? 1590. See, yep, there it is. 1590 cedar here. Or drill. Let's see. I think this one was our seed one, right? Oh, the cover's not open? I thought the cover's open on this one. Nope, guess not. Okay. Uh, liquid fertilizer. Yeah, hopefully that's enough. I know we're not quite full. I don't remember. Liquid fertilizer gets used quicker than the seed on this one. Got 411 gallons on board with this. Wow. And as a reminder here again, we're playing a little bit more uh, retro style here on this uh, series. Uh, we've got several things here for Farming Simulator 22 turned off. Uh, so we are playing with seasonal growth turned off. So again, the seasons are still progressing, everyone. Like, we're in the month of March. You know, we advance a day, it's going to go to April. But that does, ha does not have any effect on our growth cycle. Well, other than it, it advances it. Um, like, again, seasonally-wise, it's not being used. Okay, let's uh, turn on... Oh. GPS on this tractor. Do I keep forgetting about that? Uh, you know what? We are going to have to uh, we are going to have to solve that issue here. We've got enough money for it, barely, but we do. So let's uh, yeah. Okay, much much better. Oh, back in the day, well, we didn't really play with GPS so much back then, did we? At least not uh, not in Farming Simulator 
Let's see, show lines is on, good. Uh, not Farming Simulator 2013, anyway. Turn that on, lock it on. Oh, doing oats, so we're doing oats. Hmm, we just did oats. Not sure why not. Already started. Let's go with it. And we got the Case Magnum over there working on the disc. We're running the planter here. Looks like the tractor can handle the planter just fine. Bit of a bouncy ride here. Wow. Maybe time to put a little more downforce on that rolling basket on the back of that uh, disc there. Give me level this out a little bit more. But, you know, looking at this field, I mean, at least from the lines that are on the field, the lines are kind of running the wrong way for the type of rollers we have on that uh, disc. For that type, the lines should really be running, you know, perpendicular to what we see here. One, it's not, this looks more like a packer type style a texture, right? One. Making the turn. Oh, that engine uh, engine speed is all over the place, isn't it? My goodness. 14, 15, 13, uh, seen 1600 there. 14, 15, oh my, 60, yeah, there's 1600. So it looks like 1700. Wow. Oh yeah, 1800. Hit 19, 19, uh, I thought I seen 1900 there for a split second. I won. I said engine speed all over the. Oh, there, there we go. There's 1900. Goes back to what I've uh, said before when uh, looking at that there. Um, I don't think Giants quite understands how tractors typically work when it comes to something like that. I won. Usually your RPMs stay a little more consistent, right? I mean, they might vary a little bit, of course, but not like we're varying from looks like 1,300 to 19. That's that's a range of over 600. I'm like, oh my goodness. Usually on your tractor, you're maintaining a pretty, like I said, consistent RPM. I think the uh, reason for that, though, is Giants tends to treat these uh, tractors like you do vehicles in real life. Like in real life, having you got your gas pedal, and that uh, directly corresponds with the RPMs of your engine, right? Well, that's not exactly how it works with tractors, typically. You got a throttle, yes, but then you got a transmission, and yeah. Usually, you kind of set your engine speed and, again, keep it pretty consistent. And depending on how fast you want to go, usually you adjust your transmission from there. You don't, uh, so to speak, step on the gas more, right? Also, oh, really bumpy riding this tractor. My goodness. Wonder if we still have uh, suspension on the rear axles yet. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, looks like we maybe do there a little bit. Oh, uh, yes. Giants and their physics, Evan. I, I, this must be a Giants physics bastion episode here. Always had to chuckle at him. Not necessarily maybe bastion, Evan, just the, the way Giants handles uh, physics on the tractors. I, I find it quite amusing. Uh, you know, obviously, in real life, Evan, typically your tires are going to kind of take the bounce, right? Using a uh, rubber air-filled tire a lot of times. That will kind of absorb some of that. In the game here, everyone, the, the tires really don't absorb any bounce, right? The way Giants has done the physics is it's absorbed at your axle. So if you watch the axle inside the housing, everyone, you got to see it right there. That axle is bouncing up and down inside of that housing. I think we should probably replace the bearings on that about the <laughs> everyone. 
Oh, yes. Uh, if, if your axle is doing that inside your housing, you ain't got problems. But yeah, just the way Giants has done the physics there on that one. I would imagine the, uh, the, the physics to actually make the tire perform correctly is probably a little bit more difficult than just, uh, yeah, we'll just make the axle bounce on the housing. I don't know about you folks. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go sit in the hot tub after running this tractor. Wow. A lot of bounce going on here. And there's a car stop there. Why is the car stop there? Oh, the tractor's turning around, but wow, he stopped way back. Which is good. I'm, I'm okay with this. Just get out of our way there, car. We still have traffic turned on yet, surprisingly. I haven't turned it off yet, so... You know, uh, one uh, benefit of... Well, have you, I do not have you lowered down. I was like, well, we're going too fast. What are the chances this will back up straight the whole way? Surprisingly good. Okay, cool. Uh, anyway, I was about to say that one. One of the you know, benefits of uh, driving in the cab or... or you know, the camera in the cab, you know, if we miss any spots, it's a little bit harder to see that way, right? Our, uh, our field quality manager is really going to have to put his spectacles on to see any missing spots now. And yeah, just, just you know, don't even look over that way and you'll be fine. I will say it is kind of cool, though, looking out across the field and you see another tractor working there. Of course, that is, again, our hired worker. But yeah, it looks like we are going just a little bit faster than the disc here. We are, whoa, planting at 11 miles an hour. Oh, I just seen the speed there. Wow. Okay, then. Cool. I don't know if this is necessarily a high-speed drill here with this uh, setup, everyone. This is probably more like a 5 or 6 mile per hour drill here. You know, maybe if you're really daring, maybe 7. These, uh, these type of planters have all often been kind of, kind of compared to an uncontrolled spill on the ground as far as your seed is concerned, everyone. These things just kind of like uh, throw it out there and let's see what's what comes up, right? Compared to like a corn planter, everyone, that's a much more precision unit. You know, the corn planter, again, everyone, I don't know if I'd necessarily say more precise on the depth, although probably they are. They're probably a little more precise on the depth, but they're much more precise on their seed placement. Getting that uh, seed spaced out very precisely. Whereas, yeah, with this having just, uh, again, kind of a uncontrolled spill on the ground, so to speak. That's maybe a little harsh for this, but it's, that's about the truth of it. Uh, the way these type of planters tip and get work, everyone, they usually just have a meter roll at the bottom of the box there. And then I don't think this one actually has it modeled here, but there should be all hoses running down to each one of the... Uh, one of the openers here. So I don't actually see. I don't think there actually are hoses running down. So that part of the planter here must not be modeled. But yeah, there, in real life, I mean, there should be like hoses running down to each one of the openers there. And you just, uh, that meter roll turns and dumps a certain amount of seed down that tube and just, there you go. Not necessarily any sort of uh, precision to it, right? Just dump it down the tube where it goes hopefully in the ground right and then hopefully you don't have any uh, plugged up runs there right everyone you know you just plant along next thing you know you got uh, three of them are plugged up over there now of course some of the newer planters nowadays they got all sensors and stuff that'll kind of maybe hopefully alert you to that but i don't know if this particular one does that one not sure on that one i'm sure there's probably the possible to add something to it but I think as far as, like, coming from the factory, I don't believe this planter had anything like that on it that I know of. So, yeah, you just, you know, plant along, everyone. Um, you finish planting there. And you go check, and you got, like, half a box left yet, and the other one's empty. Yeah, that's probably not a good thing, right? I mean, you probably got uh, 
probably got something plugged up. Seen it happen many a time. And just like on your old uh, corn planters too, oven, obviously again, a lot of the newer corn planters nowadays, they've got all the sensors and, uh, you know, arms and bells and whistles start going off when something uh, doesn't work right on a row unit. But, uh, you know, back in the day of one, the old uh, corn planters didn't have that. The farmer would just uh, be planting along. Uh, you get to get to the end, you go uh, like, well, i got to be about out of scene. You go check and, uh, yep. You know, five out of your six row units are basically about empty, need to be filled. Meanwhile, the last one is... Are we down? Yeah, we're... Okay, we're good. Meanwhile, the last one is still like three fours full yet. You know, so all those uh, rows you just finished, well, you were missing a row on all of them. Reason why back in the day, farmers probably got out and checked their planter quite frequently to make sure, you know, hopefully you didn't get more than a couple of rows in before you caught the problem. And obviously nowadays with all the sensors on them, that's obviously a, even better, right? You pretty much can hopefully catch the problem very quickly, if not immediately. Well, I don't know if I have any uh, comments here from last episode or not. I'm going to record this a little bit earlier than I normally do here. And just a reminder, too, I mean, if you haven't already clicked the uh, subscribe button, don't forget to do so. Always very much appreciated. And, of course, if you like the video, I mean, don't forget to give it a thumbs up here as well. Anyway, with that, let's uh, head over to the comment section here a minute see what you folks had to say here. Let me turn around here a minute. There we go. Uh, okay. Uh, Tim was saying, nice video. Can you do a Let's Play series of American Farming Mobile and Farming Simulator 23 Mobile? Uh, we will have to see. We'll have to see. Uh, Tim also says, Merry Christmas. Uh, Tim was also saying, uh, one goal for the series, you can maybe uh, buy Field 9 and do some corn silage. And maybe grow some sugar beets. Actually, you know, we were just talking about growing some sugar beets here a few moments ago. But, you know, if we get the sugar factory there, we might have to... Uh, might have to look into doing that. Uh, Willard's... Will, Willard? Willard Locks. Okay, I think I got your name right there. Uh, great video as usual. Well, hey, thank you very much for that again. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, what editing software do I use? Uh, I use CyberLink Power Director. CyberLink Power Director. That has been my uh, go-to software choice here for the last... I don't know if it's been 10 years. I don't remember if I started with that one or not. I, mean, I, I possibly did, but that has definitely been my go-to one here for the last uh, many, many years. Haven't, uh, haven't found one I like better than that one yet, so... And looking at the time here, it looks like it is, unfortunately, about time time to wrap it up here again this episode so with that you folks have any comments and or questions be sure to leave them down below and as always Evan thanks for watching until next time